He's my new favorite go to uh, scapegoat guy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, oh, Bob Oz here too. Fatuho, we haven't seen you on Sundays in a minute. Look at uh, sisters. And uh, also, Ia uh, Suruwa, good to see you. Um, I like it. I'm jealous. All right. So I wanted to start here. I got a little concern this week that my conversations about uh, Wakanda are getting a little too out there in La La Land. We're definitely going to go out in La La Land today, but I want to preface it by seeing if anybody have has any questions on the more practical concerns. And I do think it leads into the topic of how to do a bow and 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 the approach I want to make to that uh, subject of how we do a bow is is not in terms of you know, put this here, put that there, say this prayer, you there's a wide very range there's a wide main talk of that. And I'm I have far from the only way of doing that. But I think that if we don't have the proper intention when we're doing those rituals that we're potentially engaged in self-sabotage does that make sense what do you think fatoko misaligned intention could affect the outcome of making an offering no that's always possible baba oh we can't hear you what's happening can you hear me baba yes, you can. yes we can hear him um, baba, we can hear you both we can hear you both. it might be me hold on it is me wait there we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, but for those who don't know it, uh, Baba Fatokun is one of the great masters of the uh, art of Adi Mulus. It's practiced in Brazil. The the way he feeds his shrines is uh, impressive, clearly effective, and uh, the result of a lot of hard work. Uh, not necessarily my strong suit i mean i can do that i have but uh, baba you're the master at it so tell us what you think about that process of adimu yeah the adimu you do uh, in along the lines of uh brazilian uh, arisha worship well it's 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 really i guess uh not all that complicated um uh, you know when we do uh Oseifa, uh you know, there's there's always uh you know in addition to the the general prayers that are always said, there's a there's a consultation that we do with uh, you know say far with Orumila, because in there are other deities that join uh, Orumila in the Ose. For instance, um, in our practice, um, uh, Ajay. Egbe Orun, uh, Olokun, uh, obviously Eshu, um, um, yeah, so Oshun, Oshun for sure. So those deities, in addition to Arumila, generally in our tradition, they, they participate in Oseifa. And the question becomes, uh, you know, there's a, uh, we're asking Orumila what elements uh, he wants for that Oseifa. So it's generally, um, you know, the range of elements is generally between bananas, um, um, what we call, uh, in, uh, we call it Akasa, but it's, uh, Echo, right? The echo uh, and the, the 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 toasted bread, right? The 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 uh, bread that's prepared for Rumila, and um, and then um, 
you know, there's there are the other elements which are palm oil, uh, olive oil, um, sometimes uh, roasted fish, um, and uh, there's various um, other types of elements that can be depending on what arumila I ask for, right? So in that practice. Uh, we, we have the invocation for each of the deities, and then we consult with each one, with Oshun, with Ajay, Egbe Orun, uh, Olokun, to also find out what they want for the Osei Fa. So um, those, that's a, that's a simple um, Osei, I mean, it's a simple process for Osei Fa. Uh, uh, for those deities, and it generally, you know, it, it generally is close to the same thing. Some will say, "No, I don't want bananas. I just want uh, echo, uh and uh, palm oil and um, um, maybe um, you know uh, what I'm, I'm trying to. I have the words in Portuguese. Uh, they may want uh, just the echo. And so you ask the you ask each orisha what they want in that range of things that are generally um, offered to during Oseifa, and then we prepare those things and put them. Sometimes o, o Aje uh, is more complicated. Uh, she receives often um, a type of squash, not squash, is it or pumpkin that we use with uh, eggs. Uh, uh, Olokun also, so sometimes their their requests are more uh, elaborate, but we find that that's uh, it's an important integration of elements from the natural universe that are able to uh, draw close the the spirituality and also it's part of our reciprocity with the deities of giving back uh to the deities uh to the natural the forces of the natural universe our offerings that uh, uh in thanksgiving for uh what it is that they've uh, shared with us so it has a multiple um multiple uh, uh reasons for doing it and uh and 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 very important in terms of this we think in terms of the spirituality of uh, Orumila to maintain the uh, Ikin uh, uh, fed and fortified and have that, that relationship with the spirituality because the Ikin is the center of our work with Orumila. And so we never try to leave those uh, altars, those shrines without attention, to leave them dry, all right? There should always be some type of, at least we think, there should always be some type of uh, interactive offering going on between your shrines. So every those offerings, then they stay with those shrines until the next Oseifa, which is every four days. So you have a you have a practice of every four days. Uh, and there's these are established days within our tradition. So the whole world is doing this across the the planet in terms of Ifa, we're joining with all of the other men and women of uh, the tradition and we're doing Ose Ifa. Um, and right. so if you can't do all of that, we always do minimally uh, apple, bananas, because bananas are easy to get, right? So minimally bananas, uh, uh, palm oil, and gin. Um, and OB, if you have access to it, OB is always very important. Um, so we have we just to finish up, Baba. We have um, we have what we call minerals, um, minerals and seasonings. And the minerals and the seasonings are the apple, uh, palm, uh, uh, olive oil, um, and the the minerals are salt. Um, I'm, my my uh, we have a, a the 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 powders that we use like uh, powders from uh, bush rat right that are that are also put on the shrine 
uh, powders from, and these are animals that are, are have been offered, but then we we cook them down to uh, powder and we turn it into powder so that we always have that accessible to, um, uh, we call it ebu. Is that what they call it in Nigeria? In, uh, ebu? I, I haven't heard that ex expression, but they might, you know, there's yeah. over 200 dialects of Yoruba, so yeah. I'm well, not going to say no. Yeah, yeah the ebu is, uh, we take, at the end of major, uh, ceremonies will take elements of all of the animals or or offerings that were used and we reduce it to we reduce it to uh, ashes so that we have right. we have that 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 offering always available and so we can always place it on the shrines um, even in times when we may not be able to get access to all of those animals we have we have the uh, we have the the ebu, we have the powder, we have the ashes from a major ceremony that we can. So, like Baba says, there are many different ways to approach this, uh, but that's our tradition, Baba. Aburu aboye. Okay. Listen, I was going to open up the conversation to Jen, but I think I'm going to put that down the end now because you took a deep dive into the topic for and that. I don't. I don't want to sound like I'm disagreeing with you in any way because I'm not. But I would like to tweak that conversation just a little bit, if you don't mind, sure. Baba. Sure. I tweak it. <laughs> sure, Baba. Let's be clear from the jump that the spirit of fire is going to always be the spirit of fire, whether we feed it or not, whether we make an offering to it or not. or whether or not we... So I think the first conceptual uh, idea that we need to consider is that spirit does not need our offerings. Spirit's going to continue to be spirit no matter what. Anybody disagree with that? Baba, you disagree with it? Oh, exactly. So then the, because the question that really begs the question, right? The offerings is the role model, it's a wool coco that uh, means that we study the mystery of power. All right. So if we're accessing spiritual power, we do not want to do that from the self-perception of being a thief. Think about that. For a we do not want to access spiritual power from the perspective of getting something for nothing. Is that clear? I hope that's clear. I'm freezing up quite a bit. Ah, I know. I've, the, mm, can people hear me all right? The, the reception where I'm at is really bad because we've had six weeks of triple digits temperatures and my phone doesn't work and all kinds of stuff. I can't Google search anything. If, 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 if you lose a lot, somebody signal me by hand or somebody say something and I'll repeat myself, all right? Okay. Baba, it is going in and out just a little bit. So if you uh, okay. talk a little bit slower, Zoom should be able to pick it up and catch up. I will try and speak slowly, which is not my strong well, What you're doing right now is perfect. Yeah, what you're doing now is perfect. All right, all right. So, so we're making offerings to hold the space for not being somebody who asks for something for nothing, all right? So the next phase of that process is, I believe, is to 
engage in an act of appreciation. Quantum entanglement, which uh, holds us together as a community, both as a religious community and extended family, but I would say as a, as a planetary community. Well, appreciation is the foundation for trust. And, and without trust, there is no effective prayer. So you see the logic there where I'm going? First phase, I'm not a thief. I don't want something for nothing. I'm showing my appreciation for the ability to work with spirit by making an offering. Important in Africa. Every offering is simply a filter towards offering food to the community. In other words, nowhere in Africa have I seen food placed onto an altar and it sit there until it rots and then it's removed. That's not a part of, I don't want to say it's wrong. It's not a part of the way things are done in my community. I'm saying that maybe a deeper I've never seen food on an altar for more than an hour. Uh, you know, there's a mistaken notion the longer it's on, the more power it will have. No, it's, it's the, the important thing is the process. You understand? We put food on an altar. We say prayers. We express our appreciation. We ask for guidance. And because of the phenomena of quantum entanglement, does anybody understand quantum entanglement? I'm gonna express that, I'll explain that a little bit more thoroughly in a moment, but quantum entanglement, yeah, that's fine. Quantum entanglement means that our prayer is absorbed by the food and spread through the community by virtue of eating it. We lose that element of connection to quantum entanglement if there's not ingestion of the food. Uh, Ia Fajala B wanted to comment on that. I uh, just wanted to add that um, when you pray, when you prepare any um, uh, uh, offerings, it is a way to plug into that frequency so that you have the exact frequency that you need. The intent is important. It's important that you, if you're doing an offering to Egum, that the Egum get it and not, you know, um, Orisha. So you have to use the frequency and the frequency is the intent. The frequency is whatever you're offering and the frequency is also um, um, the words, the vibration, the tonalities that you give as an offering to open so you can plug into that frequency only and and then you can interact with whatever uh forces that you're working with at that time i'll say yes everybody heard that yeah. uh excuse me it takes a minute when sarah's Speaks, okay. I need to turn off my sound or we get a bad echo. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so let me make sure that I express that clearly. So I'll Uh, you cut out, Baba. Baba, can you um, start again? We can't uh, hear you at all now. Just call it. Am I too fast? Um, can you start that thought again? Yeah. We couldn't hear you at all. Yeah, okay. The act of presenting food 
called Adi Mu in Yorba to our altars is to infuse the food with our share the infusion of ashe that we put into the food to the community. I sense sometimes that based on a Christian overlay, which is not inherently bad, but it's different, you understand? Offerings are sometimes seen from a Christian perspective as an act of attrition for sins committed. And we don't have that perspective in Ifa. Do you see the difference? There is no mea culpa in the ritual process of Ifa that I'm aware of. Um, if, we have, if we've insulted somebody or if we've slighted them or if we've been rude or acted inappropriately, there's an element of apology in dealing with that, but the more fundamental component is to fix it, to modify your behavior, and to not make the same mistake again. So let's bring it back to the idea of uh, the four day prayer cycle. Starting with the new years, every four days, the earth itself goes through the cycle of life, death, transformation, and rebirth. I'm on the verge of a rant here now, so I need to take a deep breath and slow down. <laughs> life, death, transformation, and rebirth is a natural cyclical process. And that process is further altered by the effect of Ashe coming through portals or uh, chakras of the earth itself. So if you're going through a cycle of life, death, transformation and rebirth, on a day with, when the chakra for Shango is open in your vicinity, that's going to have a different energetic component than if you uh, are on a cycle when the chakra for Obatala is open. So there's potentially a very complex divergence of spiritual forces at play in any given day that we uh, make offerings. Does that make sense? Now, they track that in uh, traditional Yoruba culture through a process called Gede. We all know that the Prefix ge is uh, the Yoruba word for female power that expresses itself in the world. The word de from the uh, longer word dide means stand up. So gede means female power stands up. Uh, when in the Yoruba language, when you say something stands up, you, you're inferring that makes itself available, that it has become manifest, that is it inserting itself in the world, all right? So Gede is the manifestation of on in the world. And the nature of that uh, Ashe can change qualitatively depending on which of the uh, 
Orishas are channeling that information. But female Ashe, Gede, always has the same function, and that is the ability to manifest, give birth, procreate. That's a distinctly female uh, Ashe, right? So we align our spiritual work with our altars, with the power of fertility or female manifestation, because we're engaged in a process of co-creation. Tell me who doesn't understand what I've said. Is, is everybody with me? Don't be shy. Uh, That's really profound, Baba. I don't know about that, but it's like the ancestors, if it's profound, I'm trying to share my perception of what's going on. And where the rant comes in is too, too often in our faith, we hear that uh, the four day cycle determines which Orishas we feed. No, it's never done that. It doesn't do that. I can't imagine that it never will do that. But lazy, sloppy thinking says that because Monday, I mean, Sunday is. Uh, a Rumila day that you make your offerings to a Rumila. If we use critical thinking, that makes no sense because we have Eshu day, we have a Rumila day, Shanko. Frequently, as Bill just explained, a number of uh, Arisas are fed on the same day, and that wouldn't be possible if it was true that certain days were certain Arishas. That's a totally bogus, made up, nonsensical idea, and I can even name the person who made it up that would be gossip. But the point is we need to uh, use critical thinking to examine what we're doing. You understand? Critical thinking informs our process. I had twice this week, I had people who wanted me to do work for them, make me promise that only I would touch their head because if anybody else touched their head they would be contaminated for life and it would be extremely traumatic you know what my response to that is yes. Fatoko, you know what my response to that is if your head is that freaking fragile lock yourself in your bedroom and stay there <laughs> that's <laughs> so sarah told me to calm down and i should but it's just like I am at 76 years old for that level of foolishness. You know. Here's a news flash. I was initiated by an eight-year-old. He touched my head and apparently I survived. You know, so um, I don't want to hear it. It's that simple. And uh, okay, so here's the IFA quiz. What's the fundamental problem with even bringing that issue up, you know? Carlos, what's the fundamental problem with bringing that issue up? Baba bringing up what issue? The issue of is anybody but you going to touch my head during the initiation? Oh no, no, you, you said my opinion. I, I I agree with you. I mean, I I um, a, <laughs> in, in many circles there are people that there's there's this sensitivity, this this uh, I don't want anyone to touch me. But it's not just in Ifa. I've seen it in other in other religious communities. True, that's true. Concern of laying on of hands and things like that. Yeah. Right now, listen, and I actually understand that it wasn't quite my. That wasn't quite my question. The question is, asking me who's going to do that is questioning my ability to do the ritual. And if you question my ability to do the ritual, which is certainly your right, then why the heck are you asking me to do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, let's get basic here, you know. If I, if I didn't, if not allowing somebody to question me, is uh, really puts me in the realm of cult leader. And I, I avoid that like the plague, hopefully. But uh, if you don't think I know what I'm doing, then why are you asking me to do it? It makes no sense. Let's get some fundamental pieces of logic together here and having the conversation, you know? <sighs> Anyway, that's my issue. But the, the, the point here again is that um, I think the more we're able to 
understand what we're doing, the more effective what we're doing will be. All right. So we're making an offering every four days to reestablish our connection with spirit, our connection. We're not establishing spirit's connection with us. We're, speak, we're reaffirming our connection with spirit. You understand the difference? We're reaffirming our commitment to the discipline. We're doing that by saying we're not a thief. We're not going to ask for something for nothing. And we're making an offering to show our appreciation. And I think that component of what we do is lost in our lost in the Western world when we have so much abundance, you know. Uh, they make um, what are those bean cakes called, Baba, for ego? It's called, I want to say Akara. Akara, Akara, yeah. Bean cakes, that's like free donuts. I mean, the Akara comes out. You know, and their taste are great, you know. In the uh in Ode Ramo, they're eating fufu and pepe soup three times a day. So you bring out the akara and it's like, oh my goodness, it's time to celebrate. You understand? And in, in the diaspora, when we bring out akara, the reaction is, is what's this? This tastes good, it looks nasty. So we're losing, we're losing the <laughs> We're losing the communal appreciation element, you know. Sometimes I think rather than giving aqua, we should give uh, Krispy Kreme so to the ancestors and share them. I mean, it would be it maybe generate more of the kind of emotional empathy we want. But uh, the point is, we can't lose sight of that component. I believe you understand. The, the, you know, even with blood offerings, the idea of killing the goat outside the carnival. There's, I've never seen anybody say, oh, let's have a barbecue, let's kill a goat, let's sit down and eat. Never. No, I haven't seen it once in six trips to Africa. You know, goats, say again. I'm sorry. I've never seen any. Yeah, choppy, Baba. I'm sorry. Am I really broken? Yeah. Uh, You're better now. All right. So I, I'm going to say it again. I have never seen anybody kill an animal just to eat it. Eating food is part of sacrament meaning making sacred. And it's part of a ritual process in which appreciation for the food is believed to ensure that food will continue to be available. Did everybody hear that? Look at that. Uh, so, People, some people bless the food in the West, that's true. But I would argue probably not many. Certainly the idea of only eating meat in a ritual context is a non-existent idea in uh, America, certainly. So what is the implication of, I mean, what is the consequence of that lack of attention to the ritual component of food? Anybody think about that? Two weeks ago, John Kerry blamed uh, global warming on cattle farts and wants to make uh, cattle uh, uh, farming illegal and wants to replace it with 3D printed meat developed by Bill Gates. I'm not on board. I don't know about you all, but uh, I think that's a direct consequence. I mean, it's, it's blatantly absurd. Do I have to explain it? Maybe. Uh, from cows is not causing global warming. Sorry. Uh, you know, what we do, what we can say is 
that Elon Musk has blown four huge holes into the ozone layer, one the size of Antarctica, which increases the radiation that comes through the atmosphere, that might have had effect on global warming, but not cows. All right. Life is made to work. Trees absorb the gases expelled by cattle. There's proof of that in Australia where a study was done saying that uh, the natural gases from animals is easily absorbed by the trees in Australia, right? So Carrie's argument does affect most side of We lost you, Baba. Okay. Can people hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, Rosanna gave me a skeptical look. Yes, we can hear you now, Baba. All right. So let's get to the. Okay, good. I want to get to the deeper implication of what I'm saying here. It, unless there's questions, are there questions? on what I've said about the process of being offered. As a question, yes. Jonathan, do you have a question? Well, um, I was raised in indigenous uh, so culture, so well, um, I was raised in indigenous culture, right? So as you're saying, the act of sacrament of, you know, the animal and the sacrificing of the animal's life to feed the community, there's always that element of prayer and thanks, because that's how more you bring more abundance in is in that act of reverence, right? So if we're in these practices and we're constantly giving thanks and understanding, that's the natural order and progression of things like that's what we're here to bring back so thank you for that baba yeah listen i would i would uh, agree except i do not ever use the word sacrifice sacrifice is a christian connotation if you've ever if you've ever been on a real buffalo hunt as opposed to the buffalo hunts in the movies uh um first nation warriors sit in a circle outside the herd and pray to the leader of the herd to bring the buffalo to the, to their circle that has volunteered because of its destiny to provide food. There's no sacrifice involved with that. That's an issue of agreement. And so uh, the leader of the herd calls the herd, brings the uh, animal to the forefront, separates it from the herd, so there can be an easy slaughter. Slaughter is the right word. Slaughter means killing an animal. And then the animal is slaughtered and butchered. But, the, um, you know, in the bigger picture, that's a way to maintain the integrity of the herd. Sacrifice would be just killing the animals until they're all dead, which is what we did to the buffalo in an effort to destroy First Nation culture. That was a sacrifice. You know, so I think we need to be careful of our use of words around ritual processes because they inform our intention. Thank you for the clarity, Baba. 
Yeah, no, listen, I'm not trying to make you wrong. I'm just saying. No, uh, no, no, no. It's always good to be clear, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to fine tune concepts. I appreciate it, Baba. And then we lost you. Bugger's sake. Hello? Baba. Yes. Uh, oh boy, boy, this is Aduni. Yes. Uh, may I ask a couple of questions? Please, absolutely. I want to give my uh, appreciation to the class. I don't get a chance to speak much. But um, I, I, my question is, um, I've been taught or it's been brought to my attention before, even when you're doing when you're doing a sac sacrifice, making an offering, um, a required offering, you would uh, do the prayer. But do you also consider the animals' ancestors before you make that prayer? Because I was told and taught that you want them to elevate as they're giving their life for the sacrament. And I don't know if everybody knows that or does that or considers that because they're offering their life in place of ours or our families or whatever the reason is. Yeah, listen, respectfully, I just said that's not what we're doing. So what you said makes no sense at all. I'm sorry, I'm trying to stay calm because that's a common misconception. The animal is not sacrificing, it's fulfilling its destiny by honoring an agreement. Sacrifice is a act of submission, which is consistent with uh, Christianity, which has no basis in Ifa. You understand um, what I'm saying? I agree and I, I understand. And let me be a little more clear because we've yep. been saying the word sacrifice for so many, you know, 40 years. So uh, when, when they give up their life, is it our responsibility to also consider their ancestors? Because animals have ancestors too. And do we consider their lives? Yeah, listen, let me just elaborate until her sound comes back on. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Did you, you want to fine tune your question? What did you say? Well, I'm asking what my question is uh, are we also considering the animals' ancestors, their soul, for el their elevation when we're doing this? You're saying they feel we they're fulfilling a destiny, but is part of that destiny them, uh, us considering their their ancestors? I don't hear Baba at all. Do you all? No, I don't hear him. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Yeah. I might have been going in and out with yeah, my question. Yeah, just got back. So Baba, we couldn't hear if you started to respond. Early. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I was, I was. Uh, yeah, you can say that. The, uh, the, the issue, as I perceive it, Reading the prayers, and maybe I should. You're asking Ogun between humans and the animal kingdom that has a destiny of becoming food. Does that make sense? 
If you, you know, look we're at... Not, we're not communicating. Oh, I'm sorry. Then, it's then, okay. It's okay. No, no. Ask I'll your refrain. question again. I'm, I'm, no, that's okay. I don't want to hold up the class like that. Well, you're not holding it up. The purpose of the class is to get clarity. You're asking about elevating the ancestors of a specific animal is, is what I'm hearing. Yes, anytime we do a offering like that, uh, do we are we also considering their elevation? I mean, you, you could be born of 80 million different species of life. To come in as a human, you're very fortunate. To come in as an animal for, for that type of uh, reason, would that give them an opportunity to elevate? You know, or well, they, you know, is that our responsibility? I would say possibly the, uh, the answer I was moving towards is we have specific prayers that are said uh, for offering animals that are prayers to Old Moon. And what I'll do is I need to take another look at them from the perspective of your question. Maybe we can bring up that topic again the next time we meet. I don't remember that element, but it could be there. Okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Can I also ask another thing? You, you were sure. talking about the female energy of giving birth and manifesting. And right. I'm just, my, my perception would be um, anytime we have a thought, we think of it, and it manifests, that's giving birth to it. When you're giving birth to the old do, you're giving birth. Uh, and I think about the universe and the, you know, the uh, Onile, the ground is uh, female energy. And I'm looking at the whole universe spitting out all these planets and galaxies and all these, that's, that's female energy also. No. Can someone repeat her question? I didn't hear it. Yeah, let, Sarah's going to answer. Okay, can everybody hear me? All right, um, I'm going to answer both your uh, uh, your concerns, uh, Ia Aduni. Uh, one, number one, the animals, when they come and um, enter into the agreement, it's part of their elevation process. It's part of their process to elevate by entering into that agreement. So they've already kind of done that. It is our part, our part in my opinion, that we thank them for, for uh, doing that process, for coming into that agreement, for, for honoring their part of the contract. So all of the animals' ancestry is part of that uh, 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 process. It's an interconnected process. Just like I said earlier, when you're plugging into a particular frequency. So in that, yes, the animals have their part of the pact and we're honoring their agreement. We're thanking them. It's like signing a contract with two parties in agreement to move forward with getting into a frequency that we both need in order to elevate. Now, the other thing was the, um, what was the other thing? It was, uh, uh, yeah, Duny, would you help me again, please? Universe. Yes. yes, wait, say, we're, say we're a little all bit. all over the place. Yes, and you, and you were talking about the female energy, correct? Yes, I'm saying that the, the whole universe is female because it's spitting out all these galaxies and universes. And I'm saying to you, you're absolutely correct. In our and opinion, the, go, ahead, go ahead. And the other thing I was saying is that when we think something and we bring it into manifestation, that's giving birth also. It is exactly giving birth. That's why it is important that we think in the, in the process of Iwa Puele in good, in, 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 uh, 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 good character. That is the yeah, reason that, that for That goes without say, saying. And even when we're in bad character and we discover Iwa Pele or make a change for good character, that's giving birth to that also. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the, this is, you're, you're absolutely spot on. The whole idea is to be able to, be, to have critical thinking so you can guide where you want to go. You're in the driver's seat and you just need to learn how to drive. You need to know your destination point. You need to know where you're trying to get to, and you need to know the, the you need to get your map. And if you take a wrong turn, you got to get back on the road. You are absolutely right, Iaduni. In my opinion, I I, I think that uh, 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 you are been enlightened. 
in some ways. Okay. And that's just my opinion. You know, um, I, I mean, I, I was just asking because when he said, when he made that statement, I said, wow. You know, yeah. Ele, I was always taught when you're in spirit, you've got two energies there. You've got a female energy and you've got a uh, male energy on one side. Whichever manifests through that birthing canal, if it's a female, you've got a male counterpart that gives you a connection, a trinity with God, Oludemari, your, your Inakeji, that spiritual double, and, you know, which would be, if you're a female, it's a male to balance you. If it's a male, it's a female to balance them. That's their direct connection to the realm of Orun. We all come with both energies. We all, you're right. We all come with both energies. It's just, uh, it depends on um, what, what, what's going to be happening in this incarnation. That's why some have a stronger female, some have stronger male, and some are androgynous. But um, we, do, we do have that process that's always working. The creator is, uh, is amazing, and this creation, creative process never stops and never ceases to amaze. Baba, can you get back in now? Baba, can you get back in now? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, uh, Ia. Now we have an echo. No, all right. Oh, no okay. problem. I'm going to get off. All right. So my, if you look at the, there's some really wonderful uh, nature programs that EL likes to watch where you can really see that in Africa, over the entire continent, there's such a delicate balance between uh, predators and prey and forms of defense and forms of uh, breaking through those defenses that really keeps the whole ecosystem in place and thriving. And it affects the humans. Uh, elephants process, they expand the uh, width of the river. Expanding the width of the river means more water uh, is in place during the dry season than would be normally. Does that make sense? And you'll see that there's a clear decimation of the rainforest in Nigeria. And clearly because there are no, no elephants anymore in Nigeria. The few remaining elements, elephants that weren't wiped out by Western uh, greed are in zoos. There are no elephants in the wild in Nigeria and the rainforest is diminishing. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I'm saying that in the process of doing a bow, it's helpful to be mindful of the balance that we're trying to sustain in the process of making offerings. Can you give me the uh, tablet that I gave you in the pen? I wanna draw a picture here. Um, you know, we have this situation, I don't even want to talk about it. We have a situation in the Congo where Elon Musk wanted to drill oil for his industries in the Congo. The Congolese government wouldn't let him because the only oil is on a gorilla preserve. So Musk sent all his uh, sent his security team into the Congo and killed all the gorillas. All right. So uh, the effect that had on the spiritual tranquility of the Congo was incalculable, and the fact that he, in other words, the fact the fact that he had no awareness of that speaks to the issue that I, we're trying to avoid here. It's, uh, and I know that uh, the weekend that uh, I'm going to Chicago, which is in about two weeks, I think, uh, Baba Fato Cohen and I are going to do uh, some videos on the relationship of IFA to the natural ecology, to global warming, and the uh, issues of uh, greed creating imbalance in the world. Uh, but I still, can you all still hear me? 
So I want yeah. to I want to There's the symbol of Olaron, the invisible realm, right? All the yeah. ideas, all the ideas for creation come into reality here. This is IA. Did I get that right? No, this is IA. This is IA. This is where the ideas from this realm become manifest in the physical dimension. Right? Everybody with me on that? I've gone over this before many times. The ideas from our room move into IA through what's called the longitudinal light beam. A longitudinal light beam has no frequency. It is a hologram for all of creation. What do we call that light beam in IFA? IFA quiz now. We lost Sarah, you, Baba. Sarah, ask John, what's the light beam called? You're, you're, you're on. Okay, what's the light beam called? Ayla. Ayla? No, that's uh, the spirit of the light beam. The light beam itself is called Allah. Okay. You've also heard me say that if we try to perceive Allah, our head would explode. Have you heard me say that? That's a bit too much. All right. So, all energy in creation forms a torsion sphere. Everything, subatomic particles atoms, the human aura, planets, stars, they all form a torsion sphere. This is like a donut with a hole in the top and a hole in the middle, all right? The light from Allah hits the nucleus of every torsion sphere. All the time, everywhere. That's the meaning of quantum entanglement. Everything in the physical world is connected to the light of Allah. Tell me if they can't hear me so. All right. All right. So Allah So the torsion sphere supports the two three-sided triangles of the Merkaba, right? That's really badly drawn, forgive me. But these two three-sided pyramids have four points of contact with the circumference of the sphere, right? So when the light of Eli hits the nucleus, it, it moves in both directions through the opening in the North and South Pole. When it comes out the poles, it then 
traverses the circumference of the sphere. When that happens on Earth, we call that movement ley lines. We call, I'm sorry, with a woman, with an egg, with our aura, the, the, the sphere, the, the light of Ela then circles the sphere in a specific pattern, which is a, in, in Ifa, that pattern is called the uh, Anasi spider web. It's a network of energy emanating from the center of the uh, surface of the torsion sphere. Now, when that energy that's going around the surface hits one of these portals where the, the uh, pyramid touches the surface, if the portal is open, the energy of Allah then turns back in on itself in those places where the portals are open. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, not, not, not quite. That's if they're all uh, closed. So when that energy circles in, it creates different geometric patterns at the center of the sphere. Those patterns were identified in Western culture by Plato, who called them the elements of sacred geometry. So what happens then? So when light goes through the, the Merkaba and turns in on itself, creating a, ge a, a geometric pattern, the longitudinal straight beam of light becomes a frequency. Hello? This geometric pattern causes the singularity of Allah to bifurcate, spread, and create patterns that have different resonance, that generate different colors, and that carry a different fragment of the hologram. Uh, oh yeah, they did I, that make sense? You're new to this conversation. I've gone over it ad nauseum. Did I make sense in that moment? Not exactly, Baba. Not exactly. What's unclear? Better ask the question. Better ask the question. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I will get there. <laughs> no. Got three questions to get there. What are your questions? So I was a little confused. I didn't hear the, the beginning part where you were telling us the name of the, the longitudinal light beam. My oh, the light beam. Yeah. I didn't get the name of that, but I didn't want to jump in and ask you to repeat it because that light beam is called Awa. The spirit Ela, the word letter E means the in Yorubit, so it means Ela means the light. The light itself is called Allah. It's just a linguistic thing. It's a little confusing. In English, it would be light beam, the spirit of the light beam both referring more or less to the same idea. Okay, so watch. We've got a Merkaba. let's say with two closed portals and six open portals. Let's say.
That's causing a very specific geometric pattern. Can they see me? That's causing a very specific pattern in the center of the macabre. That uh, pattern then generates a frequency. Yeah, Who, who's talking? I, I can't see that. It, it's my, it's a, uh, uh, all right. It's like the, an archangel. Uh, okay, so watch. Metatron's cube. What'd you say? All right, Metatron's yes, exactly. cube. Yeah, it is that. So, yeah. Um, so the point is, this pattern we're saying is comes from the nation and is identifying the problem. Solution to the problem is the opposite pattern. Two open portals, excuse me, two closed portals, six open portals, six uh, closed portals, two open portals. That creates that stasis, it creates balance. It puts the fragmented frequencies back in perfect alignment with all the frequencies carried by a lie. So you take this pattern, you go into possession with a lie, you move that pattern towards its opposite. And restore balance to the world. You understand that, Aria uh, Day? This is what it means to make a bow. This is what we're doing. In, excuse me, Omi, uh, that's this is this is what we're doing when we make a bow. Identifying the problem or matching it with its counterpart, and we're restoring balance to creation. This process puts our consciousness in alignment with the and the entrance of Allah into the world. And the good doctor has a question. In ancient times, they called taking this and returning to that. What's the ancient Egyptian word for that process? Anybody know? Going from here to here. That process is called alchemy. Oriade, did you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Um, if you can hold up the 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 um drawing with the two patterns, <laughs> uh, the two uh, Merkabas. <laughs> I, I hardly think they're drawings, they're they're chicken scratches. I'll I, I'll do better graphics next time. But yes. So in looking at that, the one of my first thoughts is um the moving, you know how you were saying one is the solution is the opposite. Right. What I saw in my um Ori <laughs> is that the the energy moves like in a in a um in an infinity symbol like continuously. I don't know if that's yes. accurate, but I saw like an infinity yes. symbol moving on uh, the energy swirling, you know, circle around, scoop back around. 
Yes, yes, yes. So, for example, this would be uh, Osama edging. This would be opposite polarities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fused by the figure eight symbol of infinity. Yes, exactly. Right. So to me, that so says... Point, uh -huh, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. My, my main point is there's nothing in these two di diagrams that says sacrifice. Nothing. This is restoring balance to creation. You know, sacrifice doesn't play in. It's not, not part of the process. And to confirm that, Here's your Ifa quiz. What is the Yorba word for alchemy? See, Omri Lade is mouthing it, so she's just reluctant to press mute there. She's mouthing the correct answer. See, I see you. See, go ahead and say it. Uh, but before you, uh, before before you say what the Yorba word for alchemy is, tell us what the English word is for that hairdo you're supporting. <laughs> uh, I believe in the Western society, we call it a messy bun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I was saying ashe. No, okay, no, no, okay. So the Yoruba word for alchemy is a both. It's always translated to sacrifice. And that's because the Yoruba English Dictionary was written by Jesuit Catholic priests who usurped our language. Appropriate common use to the detriment of our understanding of our faith. Do I have to say that again slowly? slowly. Yeah, the word ebo was appropriated by the Catholic Jesuit priest who wrote the first English Yorba dictionary. And the original intention of the language Can they still hear me? And then we lost you, Baba. The first step in reclaiming and preserving our faith is to reclaim and preserve the original meaning of liturgical Yorba language. So what does Wakanda mean in Yoruba? Wakanda literally means the heart comes to earth to divide. Divide means open up possibilities. Wakanda means the heart comes to earth to imagination. And imagination is the foundation of co-creation which is the purpose of a bow. Pardon me, Baba. Is the foundation... Okay, so, once again. so we do... We, I'm sorry. You said um, imagination is the foundation of co-creation. What comes after that? Yes. 
So let's let's put that. Let's break oh, it. She's asking about something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to rephrase it here. Okay. So Ebo is the foundation of co-creation, which is rooted in imagination, not appeasement for committing a sin. We make offerings to create a better world, not to beg for forgiveness. Well, that's Ian uh, uh, Did Omi Lade? Did Omi Did you have an aha moment? I, I, was you, my, I was getting my definitions organized, Baba. <laughs> okay. That was, a, <laughs> that was an aha moment. So do you understand now how the mindset you bring to the process has a profound impact on being effective? I, if I didn't know better, I'd think Carlos understood me. I see a glint in his eye. <laughs> Rosanna, got, yes, I do. There's another glint. Listen, at the risk of sounding a little rude, rude, we're not doing Jesus. This is not about sacrifice. This is about co-creation. That's a different worldview. May I have permission to speak, please? Absolutely. Yes. This is Oria Day. I'm having, I'm on my phone and I'm having difficulty toggling to raise my hand. I keep pressing the wrong buttons. I apologize. All right. No worries. Um, so yeah, I, I did have an aha moment. That was that was a that was a good one right there. Um my aha was in um, or if I if I can really go back and capture the aha. Um I'm gonna say it real plain. What I heard in that is um, when we're making a bow, um, it is about, it, 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 it is the process of, like you said, um, imagination. The ebo is there to affect our capacity to imagine. It's like about elevating our consciousness, our ability to see higher, to see, think, um, be, greater <laughs> as so as solutionists to the to the tr to the troubles at ALS. Right. Now me and then I'm gonna open it to questions. Every time we create a better world, we are forced by implication to destroy the old. That's always a scary deal. So are you sitting down? Dr. Uh, Otoon, are you sitting down? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready? In traditional African culture, the symbol for acting courageously in the face of loss of the old world which is the most difficult thing we do as humans, letting go of the old selves. The symbol for the courage to do that is the black panther. Who knew? <laughs> Hence, the title of my book, Wakanda is Real. The heart comes to earth to create imagination, which we impose on the world through an act of courage. To the extent, wow. to the extent that the movie delivered that message is the extent to which it's speaking truth. Who is that? Pamela? Queen Mother, did you have an, have an aha moment? I think so. <laughs> This is not. Uh, 
Did, did you understand what I said? Yes, and my mind just said, poof. <laughs> I didn't know that, but wow. Wow. This is, I've had several aha moments <laughs> in class today. And for that, <laughs> I am thankful. I'm always thankful when my mind is blown and expanded beyond my realm of thinking. <laughs> so thank you. Right. And and I and, and 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 really the bottom line, this whole argument here is if you make an offering to Sean Go because you think he's gonna punish you because you screwed up, I guarantee that that ball will be unaffected, useless, and a total waste of time because those dynamics don't come to play in what we do. And yet that's how um, a lot of my teaching has been. Um, and Ia Fajalabi and I have spoken about this before and she had uh, set me in a, a better way or expanded way of thinking because we would do the animals and then put them in the trash can, set them in different areas, but it was never, ever, ever eaten, never eaten. Right. Um, so I'm thankful for the teachings uh, and the way to, to bring honor. Um, and even uh, I, po I posted a comment, um, it's going back to what the, uh, the other sister Ia was talking about with the animals, not necessarily for their ancestors, but we were also taught that when we're praying over the animal prior to um, the offering, to say, uh, well, after thanking it for its life, to say, may you not return in your next life as an ebo, like say a bird or an ebo goat or whatever, so that when they return, that they'll be in a, a higher position or status. Um, so I had placed that comment there for um, just being open to correction. If that is the right way of thinking or if there's a... Yeah, listen, listen, uh, I'll, I'll share another experience where I went on a rant, right? I was at a, a, I was doing an initiation for about five or six people and I had people uh, pray over a rooster that we were gonna use to feed something, right? And people were praying and it came to one moment, she said, oh, I'm so sorry, we're gonna kill you. you, you this is so, uh, poor baby but i snatched that bird out of her hand and i threw it in the air and i said okay that's not what this is about you understand mm -hmm. intention is everything you know and here's the key point if what i say is true can we affect elevation without killing the man mm -hmm. the answer uh, is yes yes all right, so people, you know, during the, our health challenges, I've been doing less and less animal offerings. I've been severely criticized for that. And I don't care. The person still is going into possession of a spirit. You know, Ifa says, if all you can do is offer dirt, offer it with heart and your prayers will be answered. Now, mm -hmm. where in that proverb is necessity for killing a goat to be effective? The answer is nowhere. Ashe. And Baba, I do want to say that since um, being connected with you and Ia and Egbe Iwapwele and absorbing the teachings and implementing them in my life, I have seen tremendous improvement. I've seen a difference. I have seen a definitive difference and I'm thankful for that. And that is and the think, point, yeah. If I could also say Baba, I think, and, and I could be wrong, um, but it appears, from my observation that because so many of us have a uh, Christian background, it seems that some of the same mindsets from Christianity uh, are kind of transferred over and come into play, like about sacrifice. I was taught that same thing that, you know, it's, it's a sacrifice and all of that. And looking at it as a, a sense of, um, in church they would say atonement 
that the animal is a sacrifice for atonement for whatever you've done wrong or to help you on the correct path or to open a door or but it's always it's like a type of atonement for you that their life is in exchange for your life or their life is in exchange for your blessings and so i'm really 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 thankful for today's aha moments well, listen, I didn't want to offend you because I know you have strong links to the church and I, you know, I support that, obviously. But, but the, uh, the, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not the average church person, Baba, because I wasn't raised in church. Thank God for that. Um, I grew up playing with Ouija boards, tarot cards, and my brother and sister and cousins, we would have seances and all that kind of stuff. So, and most of my traumas in life have come from church and religious dogma. So I, I see things from a different view. Right. Which is why I'm over here. <laughs> Look, so listen, I'm gonna, my spiritual uh, perceptions. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, you need that perspective to help other folks that have been through the same religious trauma. I'm going to raise a topic which I will not discuss today, but it's something that we should think about and talk about in the future. And I'm gonna use the wrong language, I'm sure, so forgive me. But when Africans were brought to uh, uh, the diaspora through slavery or enforced uh, capture from Africa, it was a crime punishable death by death to discuss African religion. The only religions you could discuss was Christianity. So it makes sense that that conversation would be over like traditional practices. I mean, it's not a big mystery why this confusion happened. And I'm not judging it or criticizing. Hmm. I'm saying that as an expression of religious freedom, the freedom of speech, the freedom of thought, which is diminishing by the day, but as an expression of holding on to those freedoms, we can go back and take another look at that history and reclaim the original intent. That's my point. You know, when I, I could, and I think the effort to keep that original intent confused is extremely deliberate because I know that the people I grew up with who are in control of this world understand what I'm saying, understand that it came from Africa and understand how potentially dangerous that worldview is to their control of global resources. Mm. Ashe. Don't get me started on that topic. <laughs> uh, doctor, uh, doctor, you got any questions? Questions? No, sir. Comments? No, no sir. No, no, the other doctor. No, oh. no, Dr. Otoon. That's all right. We got too many doctors in this family. That's good. <laughs> Aburo Boye, uh, Baba. Boye, what you say? Yeah, Fajalabi and all the elders here today, the Caro family. Um, Baba, I do not have uh, any questions, uh, just like uh, Dr. Pamela just, just spoke. I am just grateful for the continued uh, expansion of the information uh, that you share, and I'm grateful to be able to share this space with you all. Um, looking forward to uh, Wakanda is real to be delivered to my home so that I can, um, you know, take a deeper dive, make sure I have my wraps on so that when the little pieces start poofing out, I have something to catch it <laughs> so they can all mend back together on their own because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's, 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 it's going to be uh, something to, to, you know, to work through. So grateful for... Uh, the space that you've created, uh, you know? And so with that, I will land my plane. Thank you. Listen, I was getting, I, to be honest with you, I was getting a little discouraged this week. I did a couple of uh, lectures on this subject on my uh, YouTube channel and didn't get a lot of reaction or a lot of people looking at it. I thought, eh, maybe I've just 
whistling in the wind here, but you've referred, you, you've uh, reaffirmed my faith that this may be of value to keep talking about it. So I'm going to do that for the next few weeks and then we'll shift focus and get down to more practical matters, maybe. Uh, Absolutely. The, uh, the, the, way you have it, uh, the way you have it set up, you, you have it set up as a group. So if you keep that group compartmentalized, right, that subject compartmentalized, those who are ready for that information will be able to go into that space and, and get what they need. Those who are not ready will be able to go into the other spaces of everything else that you're teaching. So, right. you know, you have the capacity to go up or down with the information um, that you put out there, you know, so don't worry about the, the number just of yet, <laughs> right? Sometimes it, right. it takes a little bit of time to 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 get in there you know go with the ebb and flow of it but don't stop um you know right, plan right. to create for it right yeah, we're yeah i have i have to say sometimes when i go down i lose my patience but this fudge all uh kind and persistent uh support there uh yeah nifasu did you want to say something thank you yeah Actually, I will, in this discussion, I want to brag on my community a little bit because I, I, want to bring, I want to bring this down to the everyday where we're at. Right. Uh, we have uh, a, a sister uh, initiated uh, priestess of Yemaya who, on a regular basis, she will invite people in our community to come to her home where she makes fresh beignets both nice. free and not. And that's what we nice. can sit together and have coffee right and conversation. And yep. healing happens there from different, uh, even different ways of being. So this is where this information to me comes down to our communities and how we uh, lift up what we're trying to do here. So I just want to put that out there. And I also, Baba, I value you so much and I appreciate you so much. I, I know I sometimes can't be here because of my band, which is kicking it up. Right. I'm right, right back on track with you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the highest form of ritual is uh, communal eating and conversation. I think it's even supersedes initiation. It's really the heart of why we're here. You know, good conversation, good company, good food, nourishing the heart and the soul as well as the mind, that, uh, uh, allowing for the free expression of, of uh, imagination. That's why all the censors are such a annoyance to me, because it's really tearing at the heart of who we are as human beings. Uh, Fato Kun, did you want to say something? Uh, no, Baba, I just wanted to ask you if you could translate the, the word ebo. E yeah, li yeah li listen, it, it's three letters, so it doesn't have an elision. You understand? Elisions are typically made up of three-letter groupings. The word ebo has a cultural connotation of offering. So mm -hmm. not necessarily literally alchemy, but if you understand the function. Breaking up, Baba, breaking up. Of an offering, then they, they, got, they got broken. I'll say it again slowly. The word ebo is does not have an elision. It's just one syllable. The word abo in conversational Yoruba means offering, not sacrifice, offering. In traditional Yoruba culture, we make offerings to change the world. We change the world through the altered state of consciousness called possession by a law. So the word is alchemy by contact. But do you understand what? Breaking up. Sorry. We'll try it one more time. Ebo is one syllable. It means offering 
in conversational Yorba, okay? An offering is made in the cultural context to change the world. We change the world through using the alchemical process of alignment with Allah. So from a linguistic point of view, there's a difference here between literalism and connotation. That's the whole challenge of understanding liturgical Yoruba. The word ekun means black panther in Yoruba. But by liturgical connotation, it means act with courage. Ebo means ebo means offering, but by liturgical connotation means alchemy. Thank you. Makes that. sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Omi Lade, did you want to say something? Oh no, Baba. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Carlos, you look like you're chomping at the bit. Uh, uh, Baba, uh, uh, this is really exciting stuff. The, the uh, Many of the persons who come to see me are, are members of the clergy, uh, either Christian or Muslim, different. Uh, and it, this gives me the language. It helps me in, in terms of the language and how to represent what's going on in Ifa. The, the word sacrifice I use with my clients, but I use it as a term to make holy, and it helps them understand. That that's what the word, and actually that's really one of the, the, the definitions of it is to make something holy. Right. Now, a, a, and it's helpful. A, so what you presented here today gives me more of that language. Like my brain was, is, oh, anytime I'm in this group, my brain is being stretched and pulled in all kinds of directions. But when I do land using the metaphor that someone used earlier, I land calmly. There's a, a, a sense of peace and understanding just by having wrestled to try to understand something. So I just want to thank you, Baba, and the Egbe uh, as well. I would argue that from a Christian perspective, and I was blessed to study Christian theology with Paul Tillich, in his language, what you're describing as sacrifice would be uh, more traditionally defined as uh, sacrament um, are we disagreeing are you we, we uh, might i have to go back now to the original that's line fine. That's fine. and then we can continue the conversation it's, it's, it's right. embrace it and, and and wrestle wrestle with that yeah right you well in that example there's a difference between etymology which is the history of the word Mm -hmm. and common use in, in present day. So you could argue that both meanings have their place in the history of the use of the word. Got it. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, let's look at where the word comes from. Uh, actually, Thank not you. etymology, but hermeneutics. How's that for a pretentious word? Absolutely. Maria, yes. uh, Maria, who we're all going to give a hand for making the cover for Wakanda is real. If I make any money off the book, it's going to be her fault. <laughs> well, thank you, Baba, for this class. I love your family. And sure. No, for me, it's just confirmation. <laughs> I love this class. I love these topics because I think I understand. It's very visual for me. And I understand perfectly, like, you're, you're putting into words what I feel, what I see. And it's like uh, faster for me to integrate everything. And when you crack down everything about Wakanda and what I felt doing the, the book cover, it's just confirmation again, like 
um, I'm, I feel really happy to to understand that we can be miles away and still be connected with <laughs> all this energy. Thank you, Baba. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Baba. Uh, yes. Uh, if if you will allow me. Yes. I would like to ask uh, Maria. Uh, All right. Yes, we. Yes. Uh, let me ask her, Baba, please. Please, yes. Uh, Ma Maria, I need your help. Uh, we're in the process of publishing Baba's first book. Well, not, yeah, I think it's his first book in Portuguese. And uh, is it not, Baba? It's the first one that I've given permission to people to translate. Oh, okay. It's his far first, from the first book. <laughs> yeah, his first official book. And uh, <laughs> wow, I'd just really like to ask you to help us with the cover. Of course, of course, I would love to. <laughs> I'll I'll send you. Can you put your email in the chat for me, and I'll send you the 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 title what we've come up with for the Portuguese, and the translation, and then any information you may need. Um, and I would be so honored to have your engagement with us on that. Of course, I will write you the email, and I will get to that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. Uh, oh, Judge, I dropped the ball on that. You asked me to pass that message at least three times. Oh, my God. Sorry, sorry I, 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 I dropped the ball on that, Bob. But thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Kiela, did you want to say something? Um. Not too much. I actually had just wanted to, uh, going back to the very beginning of class, um, when you and Alu, um, Dr. Kuhn were talking about uh, different offerings, there were some that, uh, um, like, uh, for instance, you were talking about Olu, and you were, um, there were a few offerings that you were talking about that I had never really heard of for him. And I was wondering if you would be willing to maybe put in the chat or in the uh, group um, just a, a list of what some of the offerings for for um Olokun and for some of the other Orishas because I feel like um so, well, sometimes I feel like I'm I'm getting the same things every time. Um because I don't know what else sometimes it's hard to find uh the, the correct information on on what uh some of the different Orishas for for their offerings. And so if there's any way that you might be able to help post some of that, that would be uh, fantastic. We'll do bye bye. Yeah. Thank you kindly. Uh, Cedric, did you have a question? Baba. Uh, uh, no, I don't have any questions. Just enjoying the, the class and the information. Uh, I appreciate the way that you break everything down in a technical manner. That That's how I receive. That's how it connects for me. So, But no, uh, I don't have anything. I just thank you for the, for the class. Okay, uh, Nuriel, do you want to say something? Varul Berier, Baba, Lafayette family. What did she say? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this was a, man, this was a mind-blowing class. This was a, some, I had some aha moments. Um, and I thank you and I appreciate uh, your presentation. Um, one question I did have um, that relates to the um the second illustration um uh, with the open and close portals and that um i wanted to ask how does that relate to the odoo markings hello No, I didn't hear any of that. He wants to know how the drawing relates to Odu markings. Yeah, okay, that's a good question. Was how does my drawing relate to Odu markings? Okay, here it comes. If you don't understand me, I'm gonna do it slow. The two uh, vertical lines that we mark on the tray 
are a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional energy pattern. The energy pattern is a Merkaba, which is two intersecting three-sided pyramids. Uh, that pattern, and here's the important point, that of the Merkaba is inherent an energetic portal connecting you a stream of consciousness. This portal is a doorway to a stream of consciousness that flows automatically through the geometric path. So this pattern is recreated in nature, but it also functions as a portal when we draw it. As a portal when we what, Baba? Draw it. This is a portal. This is the picture. I don't need to plug it into anything. I don't need to have a source of ashe. I don't need to uh, read on it. This pattern is inherently connected to a stream of consciousness. As is the two dimensional code for this pattern that we create by marking Odu on the tray. So the tray becomes an instant portal to a stream of consciousness reflected if you tune yourself into the spirit of a lot. And the secret that the few who control the many know that they don't want you to find out is those patterns are how we call computers. AI is in everything and has been from day one. Understanding this means we control AI and AI doesn't control us. That is why this information is so important, in my opinion. That makes sense, Nariel? Uh, makes perfect sense. So in essence, we, we are using natural intelligence versus... Yes. Artificial intelligence. Yeah, exactly. We are, using, we are using a natural pro. We are using the natural consciousness or a natural computer, right? A biological computer, uh, energetic right. computer, however you want to phrase it. And so right. when we, when we do open or that portal, our prayers, when we pray through intention, we are speaking a program. Yeah. And through the through Allah that is connected to everything, the nucleus of everything. And then it. that's the alchemic process. You got it. Drop yeah. the mic. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got I got it. when you said it because when you when you did the when you when you did the, I'm a visual learner. So when you did the visual, I I understood it so uh perfectly. I didn't I, I was there, I was right there. And I want to see how that translates with the Odu. So now, um, this was a good teaching because um, we don't understand the process and the functions. We get caught up in the ritual part of it, but not the intentional part of it and the functionality of it. So I, I got that. I got it. So I got it. So yes, and some other stuff, but I just wanted to get that foundation. <laughs> And I'm, I got, yeah, I'm, okay. So I'm, I want you to get a bungee cord and strap it around your chest so that you stay in the chair so I can tell you the next piece. Are you strapped in? 
Oh, I'm ready. Ready to rock. What happens when you program universal consciousness into a machine and you don't understand the meaning of your symbolic language? Yeah, you cause chaos and confusion. You don't. You you think? <laughs> yeah, you cause chaos and confusion. So that that makes Who sense. Knew? When people say, when, you know, when people say my Ebo didn't work or things like that, it's because you're you wasn't aligned in it. You didn't understand the whole how it works on the universal level. So there were because so you, that was you get the yes. key thing is the imagination. If you understand how the imagination world works in the universal world, because that's where everything comes from, you get, that is just really, Allah is taking us, giving us access to all that is of the source of everything. And we know how to make and shift and change to bring balance and everything else. But these things are the tools that we can use to access um, through ABLE and other things. And um, but if you don't understand that, you know, like you said, you're just killing animals for nothing. You don't know why you're doing that, you know, and and okay. other stuff. And because your intention, your intention is, oh, I'm thinking this thing is going to do the work, but you were doing the work through that thing, <laughs> you know. You know what I'm saying? So you just using it as a. I do. It's not program. only. Not only do I know what I what you're saying, but you just explain this the 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 message of a 500 page book called wakanda is real that was the, what i'm trying to say what you just said is the point yes exactly and so there's so there's no excuse for so that brings me to the point of it, and so I'm, I'm thankful for this because with this information, we can bring, we can properly teach this information as a collective so we can enforce greater change in, 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 in our world. But we don't have the right information. That's why we're seeing what we're seeing because everybody else is disconnected and distracted and misinformed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that one step further. If you understand what I just said, and if you bring that intention to the process, your prayers are always answered, even if you don't understand the answer. Yeah, I believe that. And believe me, there's been a time or two when I said, okay, I got questions I don't think even God can answer. But in any case, I still believe the prayer was uh, effective. Uh, Kinyele, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I wanted to um, just make sure that I understand one part of, um, of this correctly. So when thinking about the torsion sphere and the two pyramids within um, and thinking about the Odu, does each one of the pyramid, the three-sided pyramid, seeing how each one has four points, does each pyramid represent one leg of the Odu? Yes, exactly. The upper pyramid is the right leg and the lower pyramid is the left leg. And their counter rotation creates gravity. And in EJ Ogbe, they both spin in the same direction, which creates a mesmer field, which is anti-gravitational, which allows you to separate your consciousness from your physical body. Bye bye. No. Did, did, did that sorry. come through? I mean, it didn't come through. You you cut out at the very end, but just to uh, just to yeah, um, what I to double check one more time. You said the you the as far as the upper pyramid and the lower pyramid, which one is the left leg and which one's the right leg? Yeah, the right leg is the upper pyramid. The left leg is the lower pyramid. Up and down, right and left don't mean anything really in time and space, but you can look at it that way. The uh, but but my point is they count counter rotate creating gravity and ej ogbe they both rotate in the same direction creating anti-gravity which is the process of astral travel separating your consciousness from your body and returning it to source 
Takes a minute for that to sink in, so you're good, I think. Where are we at? Uh, 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 Sandy, did you have a comment? No, I'm good. I'm going to listen to this three more times. <laughs> well, okay. thank you for the information. <laughs> then, then you'll be ready for the official quiz, right? Sorry, Bob, but we couldn't hear you. We think you were breaking up when you said something about an official something, but you know, we're, we're not really hearing that. Oh, no, no, I just I might have said. <laughs> and he'll be ready for the quiz. Uh, I said if he listens to the tape three times, he will be ready for the quiz. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, more than red. All right, uh, Yaniam. All right, it's three in the morning in the Philippines, so she may have nodded off. Uh, uh, Oriade, did you want to say anything more? Uh, yes, Baba. I've been uh, adding. I, I added some things in the in the chat. Can you hear me, Baba and Ia? Is she speaking? Yes, she said she added some to the chat. Oh, okay. If you can, if you can review my, if you can review my thought process, I, I'm I'm open to correction or to you know, absolutely. Oh, I, I'm not good at that. I have to go great for the Let's see what, what's here. Ah. Sarah's going to do it. Uh, let me keep asking people. We're almost through here. Gerald, Sebastian, Sean, Travis, any of you want to say anything? I'm fine, Baba. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Great. Thank you. The black, yeah, listen, listen, yeah, that's you're 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 on point. You're good. Yes, the black is Odu uh, from the Elysian Dudu, which is a uh, reference to the source of darkness or the source of nothing. The it's one of many examples of how Yoruba spiritual language has been deliberately denigrated. Doo-doo is a slang word for other things, but it's also the reference to the fundamental mystery of creation. So yes, you're, uh, absolutely. Uh, where are we? So Sarah, I'm going to let you wrap it up. What, what say you? She said, oh God, what does that mean? I guess she wasn't ready to be called up. <laughs> I, I think this was a... Um... Okay, we're, we're, am I am I echoing? Oh God! Baba, Baba, uh, uh, mute. Okay, um, I'm, we're gonna just end this. But what I'm saying is, right now, I think that today was an aha moment for many people. Baba, turn your speakers down a little bit while um, we are talking. And we'll cut that. There we go. Now go. Okay. I want to say that today, I believe, was an aha moment for many of you. And um, it is important that we continue on this path. So understand there was just a full uh, a moon, not just a regular full moon, but a super moon a couple of days ago. And, uh, and, 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 hear me now, believe me later, these are effective uh, events that occur. The opening of our senses and our, and our um, consciousness is part of the plan, the divine plan. 
and each of you have this opportunity. So the, the having this aha moment is really what Baba and myself, um, uh, that's what we're doing. That's why we do this. This is why this is done all the time. This is why you hear Baba weekly, daily teaching because he's the, the idea of opening up your senses to aha moments gives you the opportunity each time to get a greater understanding, wisdom, and, 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 and a knowledge of your destiny. So it is really good that this class happened today. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Um, and I, I hope that it continues on. We have another, that's right, we have another super moon at the end of this month, which is a, an interesting occasion also, along with several other things that happen in the uh, universe that are opening up. That means there are portals opening up this month direct portals to direct lineages, okay? You got an opportunity here, folks. This is a great opportunity. Ashtray. Well, I want to say- Well, I want to say too, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Excellent. Yeah, I want to say that uh, I'm gonna be blessed to have the opportunity to speak with uh, Baba Fashe go directly in the flesh in September so that when we disagree over theological concepts, we can settle the matter by arm wrestling. <laughs> I'm joking. All right. So if there's no further comments, Comments, I, yeah, we should definitely call it a day. We've had a two-hour session. Thank you. Let's call, uh, yes, out of pain. I, uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 yeah, listen, let's call it a day. I'm going to keep doing my Tuesday and Thursday classes. If you get a chance to uh, listen to those, hopefully that'll be a basis for writing down some questions so I can tell where we're still a little vague. In the book, uh, Wakanda's real, I trace the history of extremely sophisticated, scientifically uh, engineered projects in Africa. I mean, the, the, the machines that are left in Africa made from stone are so mind boggling. Most people can't even imagine it, let alone see it. I mean, it's just, it's almost at the edge of incredible stone structures left in Africa created by ancient African science are mind-boggling to the point of being extremely hard to believe, but we're going to look at it, pick away at it, and see why I think it is what it is. All right? All that. So, everybody stay safe. Know you're loved and appreciated. Odabo. Odabo.